Well, Pastor John is with us from afar, and I'm simply filling in as for the day. Um, one of the emphasis for this day is to have a sense of welcome. And in so doing, uh, well, it's the 4th of July weekend, well, actually on Tuesday coming up here, but I included here the poem, The New Colossus, if you want to take a look at that. Well, I'll refer to this later. But you all know about the Statue of Liberty, right? And with the July 4th holiday, we have some special things about, even, especially with the Statue of Liberty, that that was created Right after 1865, the idea came to the people in France and a guy by the name of Frederick Barth Bartholdi. Do you know what? He was a Lutheran. <laughs> of all, there couldn't have been more than 12 Lutherans in all of France. And yet here, here they got so inspired because what happened after the Civil War, this was wasn't about just a change of power and for power's sake. It was for the abolition of slavery. That it was so important that when we use those words, all men and women are created equal. This was so impressive for the entire world to hear. And that's one of the reasons why the Statue of Liberty was given to us as a gift. And then following that, you know, Emma Lazarus then wrote that poem as a fundraiser, you know, for the centennial of 1876. And, well, I'll, I'll explain more as we go on. But this is, this is one of the, one of those Holidays that, you know, takes on a little bit of the holy day aspect. And we're all involved in it. So with that, let us gather now and sing. Just as it says, you know, give me your tired and your poor. Give me all who wish to sing and more. Let us rise in the name of of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. And we sing the Kyrie. Open my heart. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105, the beginning part of our book of worship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Our holy gospel is found in the gospel of St. Matthew in his 10th chapter. This is part of what we call the welcoming speech of Jesus. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise God. This gospel especially makes me wonder about what is the most important verse in the Bible? An interesting question. Important, though. As Americans, for example, like I said it before, uh, Case in point, we're coming up on July 4th, and we are going to cite such things as all men and women are created equal in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are defining statements of what it means to be an American. Likewise, as people of faith, we cite such verses or we, that are important. So what comes to mind? Um, love God with all your heart and mind and soul and body and love your neighbor as, 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 love your neighbor as you do yourself. And of course, there's also the, well, the, the first one. In the beginning, God created. If we don't start with having a sense that God is our source and the author of, of everything, then, you know, it puts us in... It puts us in a... In, what do we believe in then? However, because of that, There's one other verse that I find as one of the most important from our Judeo-Christian uniqueness, and that is a verse that is unlike or that is truly significant for us and for all people, and that is the one where Jesus welcomes. It starts out here in Matthew 10, and after he says these words, he follows with the words, Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. And as I said, this is part of what we call the welcoming the stranger speech. Now, I'm amazed sometimes at the coincidence, the, the, the pure coincidence about how the events of the day somehow pair with the gospel or with the lessons of the day, our lectionary. After all, our lectionary is universal. 
that this reading from Matthew 10, it's being heard in all churches, all around the world, in the Catholic in the Episcopalian, in the Lutheran, in the uh, Presbyterian, Orthodox. They're all reading this and we're all hearing it today. However, what sets the gospel, especially for us, as being unique, is that this particular verse pops up right around our national holiday, July 4th. And upon hearing it, how can you not be reminded of the poem Welcoming the Stranger? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Remember memorizing that as a kid? How many of you had to do that in school? Uh, I did. Emma Lazarus's poem, The New Colossus, emblazoned on the Statue of Liberty. And no, she didn't exactly repeat Matthew 10. She used Leviticus 19, Deuteronomy 24, Jeremiah 6. She was Jewish, so she drew from the Old Testament. But you know something? So did Jesus. He used Levit he refers here to Leviticus 19, Deuteronomy 24, Jeremiah 6. What Emma Lazarus knew by heart and law, Jesus offers here with a sense of love and, and to put it into action. He put life into this law and showed us how different life may be if we begin by welcoming and loving the other, not just ourselves. Statue of Liberty isn't about protection, it's about inviting. Now, let me shift gears here. Because normally when we talk about welcoming, we assume we are here to welcome, you know, someone coming to us. Our frame of mind is about accepting and comforting by providing, you know, hospitality. In fact, do you realize that... Uh, one of the, well, the, the first teachings of the disciples in their preparation to go out after Jesus, you know, ascended into heaven was they gathered and they were instructed with this little manual that was much like our small catechism, <laughs> like Luther's small catechism, and it was called the didache, the teaching of the disciples to go out and it had six points of preparation as a guide. Number one, know your commandments, all ten. Two, pray, pray the Lord's Prayer, pray with others. Three, have a good understanding of the Apostles' Creed and how, it, how God touches us through creation that there's a responsibility and a stewardship that we understand because of that. And then following with others, living with others, we have a sense of forgiveness. And that it's important for us to be grateful that Christ is our salvation and there's a promise of eternal life. Four. In baptism, we find a reason to live. Five, celebrate the sharing of Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And then there's one more instruction 
following this gospel, one of the most important Christian identifiers, be hospitable, be welcoming. There's a whole section here for the disciples on hospitality and welcoming for you and me to be hospitable and welcoming. Ah, but here's the rub. We hear this with the mindset, expecting co people coming through those doors back there, and that we're here with open hearts and arms, minds, because we know something about being hospitable. I mean, look at how our food and how we serve, you know, how we bring people in to inspire through music and through, you know, all sorts of good worship and other services that we do. It, and developing community, not just our community, but we inspire others in community. What does it say? Jesus says, this is good. This is good. Now, bring it out there. I'm also sending you out to meet up with others out there. You just don't hold it here. Being hospitable to every person we encounter, no matter when or where, or with who, but it doesn't matter. At, at, at home, at their home, at work, maybe shopping, on the street, in the neighborhood, every conversation is an opportunity to speak words of grace. Every uh, interaction with someone is to embody this love of Christ for others. Our community has no bounds. Over the next few days, I mean, what an opportunity. This holiday is as public as it gets. We're all going to be out and about with friends and family, and who knows who we're going to end up bumping into, all sorts of people. And the beauty of Jesus' directive Be kind. Be charitable. Merciful. And as a sign of welcome, what does he say? Do you remember what he says here? You don't have to say anything. No words. You just offer a simple act of sharing a cup of cold water. <laughs> Just, that's all. Anyone can do this. Offer something or welcome it. If someone else is offering it to you, you receive it. Either way, it is the act that is important as the opener. Look, I... I know how hard it is to initiate a conversation. There are times where, you know, up here I have stuff going on and, you know, I can be shy or else, I, I, or I can be judgmental, all sorts of things go through my head. Or it, it's actually your responsibility to be talking to me. Uh, so I end up some, many times, nothing happens. But here in this gospel, it says, to initiate a simple gesture, an icebreaker, a little act of sharing, an act of kindness. And we're amazed at what happens next. Go and eat and drink and share something with someone today and tomorrow, especially on Tuesday. Uh, in fact, let's get started. You're welcome here.
eat, drink, enough said, and then go out and do likewise. Amen.
as servants of love who shower others, let us sing, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Hymn number 659. Let us rise for the prayers of the church. As we pray these petitions, if you have a petition yourself to pray, simply say at the end, Lord in your mercy, and we respond, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we come here today with a sign of your welcome. A welcome that does not just stay here, but is extended far beyond. Inspire us to be with others, no matter who. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for your whole creation, Lord. During times of catastrophe and trauma and tragedy and war, we pray for peace. We pray for a sense of healing and salvation in the sense of that salve that brings us the healing of broken hearts that can be mended and extended across boundaries, personal and national. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all those in need who seek jobs shelter, food, health, and love for the dear ones known to us. When you say the little ones, we know that that means also those who are out of sight and out of mind, those who are in the shadows of life, those at the dawn and in the dusk of life. We pray for these so that 
their needs might be met with your bountiful compassion in our community's action. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And we pray for all those we now name in our hearts and aloud for those who are celebrating anniversaries or birthdays. Lord, in your mercy. And certainly for the sick. And the grieving as we name them in our hearts and aloud. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray that we might be the sign of, of welcome and courage that brings about healing. that we fight for what is right and the, the sense of justice for all. And that we care for all. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, now, without words, we are mindful of acts we will carry out. Peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Thank you. 
for the instructions of the Didache, the teaching of the disciples. We are disciples here. We celebrate in the sharing of our Lord's Supper. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, when he was in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it for all to me, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. As often as you eat of this, do this for the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup and he supped and he blessed it. And he said, in this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of all of our sins. As often as you drink of this, do this for the remembrance of me.
our Lord's precious body and blood, strengthen us and keep us unto everlasting life, that we may be servants of love. Amen. Are there some announcements? It's hot out. Stay cool. Be cool with others. Think of acts of kindness and of sharing today. And then on Thursdays, I, we have, I'm telling you, this is it's just a wonderful time to be here and to be with others when we're serving meals, whether it be sometimes on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, there's, are there any events coming up, Mira? Just like you mentioned. All right. Well, again, um, be mindful of how appreciative we are of that we we live in a land where it respects all faiths. And all come together. And that is the nature of my tie today, if you saw. <laughs> that, that, all, that, that we're all one. We all, one God, in the beginning, God created. Okay, that is the most important. With that, let us rise and sing How Beautiful Are Spacious Skies. Words are on the back of your right Let us go in peace and serve the Lord.